Hello everyone, welcome to our episode of Showcase on Dark Souls 3, the Ring City DLC. Only a couple items left, I think there's only four left for me to cover on Dark Souls, no matter. Moving on, we got uh, probably one of the smaller weapons, but it's not one of the weak ones though. Though you may think that, looking at it first, it is the Murky Hand Scythe. Although it is not a scythe. It is not a scythe. <laughs> Bit of a wrong terminology there, but whatever. Description reads, a short shaft hand scythe wielded by the Merkmen, yeah, Merkmen, who rise from the depths. Developed by black dampness and endued with the strength of dark. Getting some uh, Star Wars vibes here. <laughs> Let's go as a quick step. Easily step behind or around a foe, side of foe, especially effective when locked onto a target. Uh, that's, that's a bit of a letdown. The specials is ripped from the other daggers. How boring. So I'm kind of thinking the animation department is not going to be so impressive this time around. Anyhow, visually, well, it's not a sight. It's a sickle. Now I'll pull the uh, proper image of a sickle here, and those who are not acquainted with basic farming tools, a sickle is a grain harvesting tool. Whether well, it be wheat, sugarcane, whatever, you grab a whole armful of it and take a, a sickle and you just grind in between with all the various wheat and stems and you slice them. Then you have a whole armful of stuff, fill in the patch, and take it back to be processed. This is a farming tool. It still looks rather deadly at the point, if used properly, but it's not a scythe. It may make the appearance of a scythe, but it's called a sickle. I don't know why developers make that mistake, or is it intentional? I don't really know. Going on to the stats of the Murky Hand Scythe. Now, physically, we got the usual damage for daggers. It's below average because they have higher DPS. The bonus is pretty much right where it should be, as usual. But we also have some dark damage, though not very much. Only 22 dark damage, but it does scale very poorly at that, but oh well. Fortunately, the critical is not even that great. It's just standard. Well, moving on to trio bonus, you got two Ds, one for strength, one for dexterity, and then you get E, two E's for faith and intelligence. In a trio requirement, you need six strength, 11, 11 for all the rest of three. <laughs> okay, moving on from that, we got the quick step, the boring animation move, which is takes five FP to use, which can be used redundant, well, pretty much back to back for excellent dodging. And we got the weight of the hand scythe at 2.0, it's not very heavy. That's expected, though. Going to animations of the Murky Hand Scythe, well, you got the basic attack is the basic slashing with daggers. I don't expect anything new here. Power attack, you got the heavy lunges. Well, as heavy as you can get. <laughs> and two-handed light attacks, you got the jab, which does not work with a hand sickle at all. And then you got the power attack, which is more like a more pr appropriate. Ugh, can you imagine getting just like you know, shanked and ripped from all these things? It would hurt like hell. It'd be very deadly. The light roll attack you saw is a useless jab. <laughs> the heavy rolling attack is a more heavy lunge. And you got the center kick animation and the plunge attack. And you got the quick step. This is simply more effective and it's slightly quicker than rolling, but it's rather boring for a DLC, DLC weapon to have that. Using the weapon left hand doesn't really offer any benefits, so there's a whole lot of point to it. And here is the sprint act, the rapid slash. Now, in upgrading the Murky Hand Scythe, at least something's nice, it's used for either Tainted Knight, which is good. I was kind of expecting Twinkling since it's built in dark damage. Alright, so it's going to be a full range of upgrades, and you don't get a whole lot of the dark damage. You only get literally two points of base and one point for bonus sometimes. Alright, and the basic damage you're getting a little bit. Not a huge amount. And so far, none of the. Oh, there. Now, there we go. On this upgrade, you see the trio bonus for dexterity went to a C. We got the fun upgrade. The fun upgrade, the, the scaling for your intelligence and faith goes to a D for whatever that's worth. I don't think it'll account, amount to too much for the scaling on this weapon. Really, I don't think it will ever. <laughs> now, another thing, surprising thing about this weapon. Despite it having dark damage, it can actually be infused. This is something I wasn't expecting, however. Most weapons don't cannot be infused when they're already built in with some kind of type of damage. Which is pretty nice. And also nice on top of that, it can even be buffed. Now there's a certain buff that works pretty well in this weapon, which I'll show later. Now, using this weapon, I have brought two buffs with me. 
as you probably know, I have equipped it, the Dark Blade. This is naturally dark damage, and it's said that the, the weapon does more damage to the Dark Blade buff, so we'll test that. So I'm gonna get a standard backstab in for damage, okay. 507, that's pretty good for a dagger. It's what I, you don't want to expect out of this. Now first, I'm gonna turn on my Dark Moon Blade. This is my most usual buff, I almost always use. So let's get a usual a normal slash in. So you can see with this buff I get a modern damage upgrade. I'll try the Dark Blade on the Deacons and the other Knight, the other Cathedral Knight. Alright, first of all, I gotta get, gotta get rid of this guy. So you can build up that DPS damage rather quickly, but still, it's dangerous to use it like that. Okay, let's see. 209, I'll just take off the buff altogether. Okay, 185, so it's roughly 20 damage increase, but here's the Dark Blade. Let's see the damage is now. Okay, 225, so I get pretty much around 35 plus more damage with the, my Dark Blade, op opposed to my 20 some damage with my Dark Moon. Alright, very interesting. Now let's take the Dark Blade. So we got 155, and I saw I got 170 on this one. So you can see here, albeit a bit small, the Dark Blade does work better than the Dark Moon. So use it whatever you wish. Now, well, I'll test it one more time, except with a greater number. Let's do a backstab with the Dark Blade. Oh, very nice, 830. That's a lot. Now I'm going to put it on Dark Moon. Let's see if the backstab damage is here. Should be a significant difference. Oh yeah, that's 80 damage difference. Very significant. At least against unarmored targets. Okay, with that said, I'm now going to use the Dark Blade Bolt Enhancement. Why? Because I don't see any point using it anymore because we see the difference. Against the Gargoyle, you can easily tear him apart quickly. He's slow and he's big. The only big problem with it is you're not going to hit him every time. Because sometimes it just doesn't connect because of the poor reach of a dagger. But it still works. Alright, that all said, it's a pretty decent dagger. Definitely I'll perform some other daggers out there. Though I don't really say it does anything dramatically different from other daggers. You just buff the Dark Blade and that's pretty much all it has going for it. But you could probably do that with other weapons you infuse with. Just the difference is this one comes built in with it. Alright, it's time to go on to the pros and cons of the Murky Hand Scythe. On the pros, it's a good weapon with DPS. In terms of damage anyway. It can be buffed and fused. Well, I guess you should put that point third, because it has that built-in dark damage. <laughs> oh well. Alright, and that is the only pros. Well, they're decent pros. The cons? The animations are completely boring, like nothing new there at all. That's where it's a colossal failure in that point. Though, albeit a bit small. And the, it has poor reach, and it is a, da is a dagger. So it doesn't fare well, very well against large opponents. Moving on to the score for the Murky Hand Scythe. Damage, I'll give a 6 out of 10. Mind you, I'm scoring this without the buff, without that idea. So, it has good damage, good DPS, what's expected of a dagger. Reach, it's 2 out of 10. It's only a step above the fist, fisticuffs range. <laughs> Animation though, 1 out of 10. This is, just, this is just a disappointment. Nothing new at all. It's like not even a new special at all. This is probably at the ass end of the development cycle this weapon probably was. Scaling I'll give a 6 out of 10, which is pretty good for daggers. You should get quite a bit of little scaling in there. With Scalene, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It is still a rather powerful dagger at that. It's just hard calling a dagger while looking at it. <laughs> but yes. Now I'm aware that some people can really put all the damage on this, but you need those specific builds in order to do that. And if you don't have those specific builds, it doesn't seem really worth it. So in total, I give the Murky Hand Scythe 22 out of 50. This is probably the only weapon in DLC that is bad. If you don't have that specific build to really make this weapon shine, I don't see really any point using this weapon for anyone else. And there you have it, a bit disappointing in the end. But there's always a run to the litter of the weapons for any game. And for this DLC, the Murky Hand Scythe is that runt. Though it can shine, though it's very difficult to get that polish on. Or very specific. But no matter. That's been Showcase for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.